knights. With Poe and Monroe. with Poe and Monroe. You're listening to Radio August. Dark Nights with Poe and Monroe. You can never find the right button, Poe. Not at all. I'm merely demonstrating that this shows the cat's meow. And on that note, what's next, Monroe? It's on the schedule, silly. I know that. I'm just making it sound like you have a choice. Okay, then. What shall I choose? Let me see. I choose an early night. You'll be fine without me, won't you? You're leaving me, Monroe? Good night, Poe. Good night, August. Sweet dreams. Monroe? I'm just kidding, Poe. As if I would ever leave our listeners at your mercy. The lady almost vanished, August. Perhaps I'll have to keep her on a shorter leash. What? Sit, girl, sit. Good girl. I bite. I like it. And now it's time for dreams and nightmares. Dreams and nightmares. With Poe Excellent and Monroe. choice, Monroe. I didn't have one really, did I? You always have a choice, Monroe, but that doesn't mean you. Maybe you should try interpreting the next call of this dream, Poe. I fear I would lack your warmth and insight. You have the ability to turn even the most ghoulish visions into something hopeful. Not always. Do you suffer from nightmares, Munro? Doesn't everyone? Tell me about yours. Well, there is this one I've been having lately. Go on. I can't see. I'm stumbling around trying to feel my way in the pitch black, but I keep bumping into people. It's like I'm trying to push through this crowd, but 
They don't know that I'm there. Perhaps you're feeling isolated. Hmm. Maybe. But I'm not interested in them. They're just in my way. It's like I'm searching for something. The number nine. But what does nine represent, Poe? Well, according to Dante, there are nine levels of hell. Well, I feel so much better now. I did warn you. Perhaps you should help our next caller. They're already waiting. Frankie, you're live with Monroe. Hi, Frankie. What a beautiful voice you have. Well, thank you. I think all voices are beautiful. What do you think to Poe's voice? I hate it. Okay. So, what's your dream, listener? I'm in August, and wherever I go, all I can hear is the radio. It's everywhere. It's loud and relentless, but there's this... bird. She cuts through the noise and guides me. I listen to the bird, and I fall blissfully asleep. That's very interesting. People dream about their surroundings a lot. And a dream within a dream? That's nothing to worry about either. What do you think, Poe? I think you have a hardcore fan, Monroe. What did the bird look like, Frankie? Beautiful. Angelic. But it's trapped in a cage. A prison. But there's only one warden. And the warden is weak. There's a warden? Another bird. With a rumbling voice that makes me angry. It plumes its feathers, but my bird? The one that calls me? She's not interested in him. And she's caged. Munro, this is obviously a prank. He's talking about us and trying to be funny. But it's a dream. I never said it was a dream. Well, I think um, we've had quite enough of this. Listen to the warden jangling his keys. Don't you see he's imprisoned you, Ellis? Well, um, Frankie, we don't use our first names on air, so I'm just going to stop you there. Dreams. And nightmares. With Poe and Monroe. And we'll be back with more dreams and nightmares later. But first, August, how about a short, dark tale? To chill the nerves. And we're clear. Well, that went well. Indeed. Just another totally normal person calling into our show. I don't know how we attract them. I do. How long is this story? It's just a quickie, but if you'd like it longer, there's plenty more I could queue up. I can still hear you. Uh, sorry, Frankie. Thank you for your dream. Thank God he told us. That could have been awkward. Very. Maybe I'll just have a cold shower. What's that? This. Oh, it's nothing. What is it? It's nothing. Give it to me. How long is the break for? Give it to me. All in good time, so how long? Three minutes. Okay, I'm going to make some tea for us. You stay here. You're making tea for me. I do it all the time. What's going on? Give me the note or I'm leaving. Of course, we must have continued drama, mustn't we, Alice? What's that supposed to mean? I'm going to kill you. What the hell, Poe? Why were you hiding this from me? It's just some psychotic listener, that's all. Frankie? Not necessarily. We have lots of psychotic listeners. How can you joke about this as a death threat? It's clearly a death threat. 
I knew it would upset you, but I'm an old hand at this, Alice. People see you as a celebrity. It makes them do abnormal things, but they're just normal people. When did you find it? Someone slipped it under the door. Just now? Well, yes, but it's nothing to worry about. We've been getting them for the last few weeks. Weeks? Maybe a month. So there could be a killer behind the door. Maybe, but never when I've looked. Oh. It isn't locked, Alice. People can just walk in anyway. Oh. There. I told you, there's nothing to worry about. T? You're not going out there. You're going live. Understood. I think I'm gonna go home. Don't be like that. How could you keep this from me? I thought you cared about me. What if I'd been killed? They're from my wife. Gwendolyn? Yes, Gwendolyn. It's her perfume. Does she know? I work late when I don't have any work to do, and I kiss her on the cheek instead of the lips. Yes, she knows. But does she want to kill me? She doesn't know who we're... I love you. I love each and every one of you listeners. I'll never be a frowny face again. Good save. Been having any more bad dreams lately, August? Okay, who's our next listener? It's... Frankie again. Put him through. Frankie, you're live with Monroe. I'm sorry about that. You can carry on now. Sometimes the radio gets too much. It makes me... frustrated. So I go into the belly of the beast, and I hide, and I listen, and I wait. So this is a dream that breaks into other dreams. Of course there are no segues for dreams. Pope? The belly of the beast. Have you been leaving messages, Frankie? Yes, John. Yes, I have. Have you been getting them? What did the messages say? I'm going to kill you. I see. And why would you dream about wanting to kill me, Frankie? It's not a dream, John. I'm coming for you. And Alice. I don't think you are. I think you're spinning us an impish tale, Frankie. You write your little notes and dream your little dreams. But you're not brave enough to act on them, are you, Frankie? Oh, stop it! What are you waiting for, Frankie? We're sitting ducks. Don't worry, Monroe. He's just bluffing. I'm not hiding, Monroe. You're going to get yourself killed. Hide. Hide. Oh. <sighs> 
and scene. I hope you enjoyed, fair listeners. Everything you just heard was an elaborate fiction. The first of many fictional dramas on dark nights with Poe and Munro. done. It was self-defense now. We will never talk of this again. Ever. Let's just go. When I was 12, my father died. He was riding his bike to work and he got hit by a bus, a school bus, my school bus. It was all over very quickly, but I was at the back of the bus and I could see everything. He didn't move, didn't get up, died instantly. image of it somehow stayed with me. You think? It doesn't anymore. I couldn't tell you what it looked like. Mother told me a secret. There's a way that you can make your memories disappear. Can you make today disappear? No. But you can. Pick one of these. Now hold it tightly in your hands and close your eyes. Now what? Think of your most troubling memory from this evening and imagine the object you're holding is there. Picture it so you can see it. Okay. You have to make yourself believe that the object is there. Okay, it's there. Now open your eyes. Now what? Throw it away. When you throw it away, it will take that memory with it. And if it doesn't? It definitely will. Finally tonight, police are appealing for anyone who might know the whereabouts of 35-year-old veterinarian Francisco Bilson. Um, Mr. Bilson was last seen by his wife a couple of nights ago at um, around 7 o'clock before returning to his office on Chaucer Street. Please contact the, um... The August Police Department if you're able to help. And that's your August update with Poe. And Monroe. So what's next, Monroe? Nightmares. And dreams. Frankie. Don't mess 
with me, Paul. It is, Frank. Put him through. <clears throat> Frankie, you're alive. I mean, Frankie, you're alive with Monroe. Who is this? It's Frankie. Thank you for what you did. Frankie? You're... What did we do? You gave me peace. Thank you. I was doing... bad things. I I've done bad things. What have you done, Frankie? Locker number nine at August train station. Her head's in there. The dogs ate the rest of her. You've killed someone? No. I've killed people. The other girl is behind the gym in an industrial bed. She may be gone now. I liked her hair. Why are you telling us this? Because I want forgiveness, John. And because the police won't ever find me now. Will they? Sorry, listeners. We're going to have to cut to a break. You're dead. I am dead. You buried me, don't you remember? But I'll be in touch. Soon. Next time on Dark Nights with Poe and Monroe. Our funding's running out, isn't it? Months ago. How do we pay it back? A radiothon. In bed with Poe and Monroe. Lurkers, if you're out there just lurking, then give us a sign. It's Millicent. Once upon a midnight dreary, when I pondered weak and weary. The station shuts down. I don't know what I'll do. You're safe, man. Dark Nights. With Poe and Monroe.